marks. Our fathers dug some wells. The Philistines have blocked those wells. Oh, I remember the well called Sunday school. We drank from those wells. Pastor Pedro, the enemy have blocked it with the earth, with carnality, with secularism. Today, no more Sunday school. That's why no more discipleship. We've blocked the wells of our fathers. I need Isaac to the Isaac generation of leaders that will rise and say, no, I want to open up those wells. That's what we're trying to do in Futa. To open up the wells that our father's dog, that the enemy blocked. Because what Isaac did, and I'm going to show you a revelation today. Isaac had two kinds of wells he dug. I did not realize until I started that passage again. He had new wells. He also had old wells. He first opened up the wells of the father. He now dug his own wells. His own wells, the new wells he dug. Well of social media. We will dig social media wells in Futa. Shout amen. amen. So I'm not against new ideas. I'm only angry that you are blocking the old ones. Because his father did not dig the well of Rehoboth. It was his own well called Rehoboth. Because he did not struggle with his father, Abraham. But the wells of his father... When he opened them up, the Bible said he called them the names that his father called them. Don't change the word fornication to fun. It is still called fornication. Name changing is the beginning of discerning our father's legacies. We have a way of changing names, the kinesis women. We change them. He called them the name his father called him was proud of the legacies of his father if it is Sunday school call them call it what? Sunday school if our fathers call them fornication we call it what? fornication don't change the name if they call it altar you call it what? altar if they call it pulpit you don't call it podium if they call it church don't call it house. Oh, this, oh, this, we thank you for this house. The covenant of this house. Church. What is it, church? <laughs> One of my dickness here, she's been having grass with me for years. On what, my dear? Say it. Cross. She says, Pastor, there's no cross in our church. A church is church. Put cross, cross. Are we ashamed of cross? I said, Sister, because I'm looking for where to put cross. Should I put cross here? Yeah. I don't know <laughs> Every now and then she and I will talk. She said, never, there's no cross here. Let's put cross. It, it is a church. When I'm going to church, I'm going to where? Church. When I'm going to event center, I'm going to event center. This is not event center. This is what? The house of God. Church, 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 church. Put cross there. Put cross. Say, God, there's cross. We have a cross outside this board building. Put one inside the building as well. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will not deny him. We will stand for him. Go and observe. Google. All of you have Google. Ten biggest churches in Lagos. Look at their logo. If you see Bible and cross and dove, I challenge you. The symbols of the church no longer is on our logos. You won't see Bible. You won't see a dove. Thank God for RCCG. You won't see cross. What you see, I, I don't understand it. Like snake. All kind of things. I say, okay, tell me what does this logo mean? Logo without meaning. A logo is your identity. It speaks volumes about your personality. I'm telling you the truth. I'm honest with you. It's very critical. We must make it secular. We must make it fine. We, must be, we want to be as Philistine as much as possible. The Philistines blocked the well of our fathers. It's the enemy's style. Music, they call it, we used to call it worship. They changed the name to music. Ministry has become industry. Industry is commercial. Ministry is service and sacrificial. That's why there's no more sacrifice in the house of God. Everything is monetized. 
We have a problem. We have a problem. They call our Levites musicians. Isn't that spiritual criminality? Levites become musicians. The ancient landmarks. I showed you a picture of one man that refused to remove the ancient landmarks that his father said. Isaac said, no. This was what my father's legacy is. I would not push it away. He dug them again. He went to those wells. When the king of the Philistines embraced him and gave him covering, the first thing he did was to go and on earth. He dug new wells. The ones that his father dug, Abraham. He now dug his own. He dug those ones because they put earth to block it so there will be no water from it. There will be no life. There will be no life. We use earth. Earth means natural and nature. This earth, we use natural things to block spiritual matters. Do you get the point? The first time pour dust. Because dust, that word, dust means earthen vessels. Dust means these things that are of earthly matter, material. Dusty particles. Canal nature. Not spiritual. Flesh. Flesh. So we use a lot of fleshy stuff to cover spiritual matters. To cover the ancient, the wells of our fathers. Ask your neighbor, say, where do you drink from today? Say, where do you drink from? Because I don't know the kind of wells you drink from. I want you to drink from two kinds of wells. One, the wells of our fathers and the well of Isaac. Every generation should have his own well. Isaac had his own well. We have our own wells. Our own methods. Our own style. A bit different from our fathers. But we will not forget to what? Drink also from the wells of our fathers. The covenant started with Abraham. Thank God. Isaac recognized that. I challenge every young preacher. Now obey this step and listen to me. I challenge every young preacher, every imagined leader to go back to the wells of our fathers. Every young Christian to say, I will not ignore and abandon all that my fathers did. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, they labored in prayers. They labored in the word. Gray air has experienced, thank God for the strength of the youth. Because that's what we did. We just knocked down everything our fathers did. You are a father today, and your children don't knock down everything you are doing. The man you said didn't know how to do it yesterday. Tomorrow, your children will say, Daddy, you don't know how to do it. We brought in everything from America. 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 We use tattoo. We have a tattoo. I'm preparing a sermon series for the youth. Tattoo generation. Because everybody is doing tattoo now. You are doing blood covenant. You know what blood tattoo is? You think it's just a symbol. What tattoo is? Can you do tattoo without shedding blood? The life of the flesh is in the blood. Do you know what that means? You are bringing blood out from your body. You are putting a mark. On your body with blood. Blood. Can you do that? It's not just drawing. You do, there's blood coming out. Blood. You're putting all kind of symbols. Covenanting with that symbol. In your body. When the Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And no church is speaking against tattoo. What is fine in tattoo? What are you tattooing on your body for? Why? You are fearfully and wonderfully made. If God wanted to tattoo, I put tattoo on you from the woman's womb. There is birth marks which will not come from our mother's wombs. Because they will now use earth to block that well again. It's just, it's out of touch with the times. I am. What kind of times? They call you out of touch. Because you love the words of your father. They say you're out of touch. One day your son will say you're out of touch too. <laughs> Teach your children where they should go. I called my son, who will be 18 this year. I said, sit down, son. And I like my son because he asked me questions. Daddy, this tattoo business, I don't like it. Give me scripture to support I should not do it. I was happy because he didn't like it. I said, number one, we thank God. Because if he had come and said, Daddy, I like it. 
Come and convince me not to do it. That would be a problem. So he said, I don't like it. I, I, I hate it. But please, give me more scriptures to support my conviction. I said, ah, to God be the... And you know scripture, it's, not, it's easy for me to give. So I gave more than enough. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you want, you say, enough, it's not enough. I'll give you more. <laughs> I'll give you Jara. We had a conversation. Father to son conversation. I did not, I did not indoctrinate my son. He and I, we reasoned together. And I gave him reasons from scripture, from culture. I gave him reasons, logical reasons, why it is completely nonsensical. It doesn't hurt to you. It doesn't subtract from you. Don't do it. Wells of our fathers. I am pained because I see many wells that are blocked today. The wells of our fathers have been blocked. Simplicity was one of the wells our fathers had. The ministry they did was with simplicity. They didn't do ministry with bodyguards. Moderation was critical. Thank you, my brother. Let your moderation be made known to all men. The Lord is at hand. I want to this with excesses. Where would we stop? We have so much excesses. The Christianity that we are given was with moderation in everything that you do. Moderation. Why would a pastor be changing car every year? Is it not pastor okay? There's no moderation anymore. Moderation. It's not a sin to be moderate, to be simple. There's nothing wrong with being simple. It is not a crime. You are preaching in your own church. You have four bodyguards around you with dark glasses. I, I don't understand. No, I, I, me, I don't understand. Me, I don't understand. I, I, and like this, looking at your own sons and daughters, home members, and with bodyguards in your church. With, I mean, it's, it's, we have a problem. We have a big problem. I don't know it. And you see the your P generation, young people, they don't want moderation. Everything they do is in excess. Ashe Ju. Ashe Ju. If they do makeup, they won't do the light one. It is heavy. You know why they do makeup? When you see them, you're actually wrong. Because they paint every part. This, this, this. this. They paint this. They paint this. Every part of your face must have one particular color. They put red. They put pink. They, put, they call it block. What? Eh? See, they know it's clap for them. Clap for them. Clap for them. I love my daughter's hair. Clap for, clap for yourselves. They call it what? Blush. Blush. Chengbo. Chengbo blush. <laughs> my first time of hearing it. What I first heard was color blocking. Now it's now blushing. My brothers, we, we, look, look, look. This thing is getting. <laughs> Ancient. Uh... <laughs> How many of you know that our fathers dug so many wells? They dug the wells of worship. Wells of discipleship has been blocked. Wells of Sunday school has been blocked. Wells of evangelism has been blocked. The evangelism they dug there was going to sinners, not going to churches to evangelize. 50 Wisdom Pillars of Joseph 50 Wisdom Pillars of Joseph, written by Reverend Yomi Kasali, is about the wisdom secrets of one of the most influential personalities that ever graced the planet Earth. Joseph applied wisdom in all he did and he excelled greatly. To find the wisdom he applied, get a copy of the book by calling 0704-4777-757 or 0704-4777-758 or send an email to photobookstore at photoonline.org. We are targeting other members of other churches. Is that evangelism? That's church changing, church prostitution. When there's so many sinners out there going to hell, your own target is. This is why we are junior. So they both agree we are both senior. In this, in this our senior, who is the most senior? No, we are both most senior. Who is the most senior? We are both most senior. I can you imagine? Ancient. Uh, I remember the church I grew up in. Our pastor's wives, were very, we were younger. If you are living in a Pentecostal church or another one in first grade those days, Paul, the, the, the pastor of this church would demand for a transfer letter from where you are coming from those days. 
I'm telling you, I'll be honest, because I was in pastor in Fort Square and we were the one in, receiving letters from a service of God saying this person is a member in good standing. We gave letters to members of our church too, based on location, based on distance, based on crisis, whatever the reason, you cannot join this other new church. We don't ask for letters today because we are competing. We have, we have turned it to secular. It's like, it's like you know, like are fighting PZ. It's like Zenit Bank fighting Access Bank. So we are getting Access Bank members, push them to Zenit. Then, 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 then uh, GTP will put from Zenit too. Then we are putting ourselves. See, you don't need letter from them. Come, come, we'll pay you more. We have a problem. When we are doing the same work, the same kingdom, it's for the same God, for the same Jesus that died for all of us. And we have the world, and we have the devil as our target to depopulate the world by taking men out of the journey and the pathway to hell, bring them to the house of God, to lead them to church and to lead them to heaven. Our target is how to depopulate Fota. Uh, okay, our target, we have flyer, go to the world. No, go to that church. Is that church your world? Evangelism then was evangel. Thorough one. Follow up was powerful. I'm not saying we should not do follow up the new way, which is to dig a new well, which is social media, but we must still not ignore the old ways. Don't say those old ways are bad. They may not, okay, some of those methods may not be right anymore, but don't forget the wells are different from methods. The well is to drink water. There could be new ways of digging well. You see, when I say do not block the words of our father, what I'm saying is the real well is evangelism. The method may be different. We may change it, but we should still dig the well of what? Evangelism. Now, instead of using the archaic method of digging well, let's now use mechanized method. But it's still well we are doing digging. Don't ignore the water from that well. It's the same water that will give you life. We may change our methods, but we should not ignore the message. Methods are different from messages. They used to preach one tough message then. It's been long I had it. They called it holiness unto the Lord. That message then every Sunday when they preach it to you, you will leave church feeling not just guilty, feeling like a sinner. You help God, you go at this, ah, holiness unto the Lord. And you shake a sister. Shake. I, I remember if I had the church I grew up, you know, I mean, I mean, this is uh, to the extreme. Men and we are doing it together. I must not shake. To shake a sister. Holiness unto the fear of God was heavy on us. The dread of sin was heavy on us. Iniquity was apparent. Respect for leaders was key. It was there. They chose leaders based on their faithfulness, on their diligence, on their commitment, on their devotion, on their sacrifice, on their love. If I to continue, I will not finish here in three days. Because I am, I am pained with how we have turned those wells. And it's the enemy that blocked them. And we did not realize it. We've thrown our culture, everything from God. We've just, we've just compromised. We've just conformed to the world so much so that we don't even know the church from the world anymore. The messages they will preach then, I don't know up till now, if I ask all of you here, define worldliness. What is it? Because then they told us, I mean, I would tell told us, love not the world, neither the things in the world. Be not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. But okay, so what is the world? How do I define worldliness? It's not difficult to define. Think about it. Write it down. What is worldliness? That's true. What is worldliness? How can I define worldliness? There's no more. Because we said our fathers made mistakes. To tell us not to be worldly. How can we win the world without being worldly? And one preacher said, For God so loved the world, so why can we not love the world? The man was inferring that God was worldly. I'm telling you. I mean, I remember that. He said, If God loved the world, how should we not love the world? Now, John was making a mistake to say, Love not the world. When God says, For God so loved the world? Can you imagine that twisting scripture? It's not true that God loved the world. It's not true that the Bible says love not the world. So how do we, how do we balance?
come to Bible study, we will teach you. And then you can ask questions. <laughs> Go to Sunday school, workers' academy, they will teach you. Then you can ask questions. Because there's a world as a people and as a world as a system. A system, the ideology. That's different from the people. God wanted to save the world from sin. Do not conform to the systems of this world, the ideologies of this world, how things are done in the world. That one is different. Evangelism, giving, the story of the Good Samaritan. Let me round up with the story of the Good Samaritan. I wish I could teach you more because the Bible says one of the greatest things, one of the oldest commissions in the scriptures, the Great Commission. I call it today the Great Omission. It's no more a commission, it's an omission. And it's a deliberate omission by the church. The Great Commission is for the church to go to the world and save them from their sins. It's now the great omission. No more commission. No more a mandate. The mandate he gave to his house and to his people and apostles was to go to the world and change the world. Not that the world should change us. Or be changed by the world.